That's better. Hello world, it's Siraj, and I'd like to introduce you to a device called the Link. The Link is a very small DNA-based molecular computing device that we can place right behind our ear and increases our ability to learn, create, discover, and connect with other humans by several orders of magnitude. I'll explain how it works at both the hardware and software level, but the Link is not yet available for consumers. In fact, it's not even real yet. It's just a very important thought experiment that every single one of us needs to go through because it's very likely that in 20 years, it or something similar to it will be commercially available. Entities in both academia, government, and industry are working on this as we speak. We can think of the link as a brain computer interface, a tool that we can use to interface with the internet, just like we currently do with our smartphones. Our brain is the most complex system we know of, and the neocortex, the newest addition to our brain, is considered to be the crowning achievement of human evolution. Our neocortex is what differentiates us from every other species. It has six layers of increasing abstraction, and the highest levels of our neocortex are what have allowed us to express love, develop language, technology, art, and science. And the internet acts like a digital version of our neocortex, giving us even more layers of abstraction which increase our capabilities. Our smartphones let us access this. They've given us so much and they've improved our lives in so many ways, but they've also caused us some problems. From 2011 to 2016, teenagers started spending much more time on social media and much less time with their friends face to face. Decades of research shows that being with other people face to face is good for mental health. On average, we use our smartphones seven to eight hours a day. We wait for replies to text messages, and get anxious when they don't come. This is so me. Anxiety, depressive symptoms, clinical depression, and suicide rates all started to go up around the time smartphones were introduced. They nag us to recharge them and interrupt us when we're having a conversation with another human. But we've decided to tolerate them because they let us communicate easily and give us unprecedented access to information. Technology was supposed to make life more simple, but instead it's made it more complex. We need a solution that removes this barrier between us and other humans, an entirely new user experience, one that works invisibly alongside us and is biological, not mechanical in nature. Enter the link. The link is a very small device that we can stick snugly on top of the skin right behind our ear. It's non-invasive and made up of silicone rubber, the same material on an Apple Watch band. It's waterproof, lightweight, non-toxic, and gluten-free. The link uses DNA as its medium for both computing and storage. It can read brain states using infrared spectroscopy, and it can modify brain states using a technique called temporal interference. Two-way communication is achieved between the internet via an onboard Wi-Fi module. I'll explain each of these terms, but first let's talk about how it uses DNA to store data. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it represents the genetic blueprint of all living creatures. It's also a unique computational element because it has extremely dense information storage, enormous parallelism, and extraordinary energy efficiency. Just a single gram of DNA is capable of storing 215 petabytes of data. For comparison, just one petabyte is equal to 13 years of high definition video content. The way DNA storage works is that first we take some digital data that we'd normally store in binary code of ones and zeros and translate it into the genetic code of A's, C's, G's, and T's that represent the chemical building blocks of DNA. Then we use that DNA code to synthetically generate strings of DNA to our specifications using the onboard byte to DNA converter. It stays in mini cold storage and when we want to retrieve the information, we use a DNA sequencing machine to decode the material inside. That gives us once again the DNA sequence which we can either translate back into binary 
or use as direct input to the DNA processor. The DNA processor is a surface of origami. By that I mean that it is essentially a bunch of DNA strands that have been folded in ways similar to the techniques of Japanese paper folding. This lets us create DNA logic gates and the interconnects that link them. We can call these nanoscale computational circuits made from synthetic DNA, DNA domino circuits. For example, a transmission line consists of hairpin loops of DNA strands with one end fixed to the origami surface. When both input and fuel DNA strands are poured on, they break the loops in the transmission line strands and force them to bend over and link up with their neighbor's strands, one after the other like dominoes falling until they form a line of DNA on the substrate. These transmission lines and other structures make elementary logic gates like AND and OR with two inputs, and we're able to make even more complex circuits by linking these elementary gates together. So we can think of the DNA origami wafer like a molecular breadboard. All of this is powered by your body heat using an onboard thermoelectric generator. The link is able to read the brain using functional near-infrared spectroscopy. This is a portable, non-invasive brain imaging technology that uses low levels of light to record changes in cerebral blood flow in the brain through an optical sensor. These signals are recorded via flexible fiber optic cables which allow allow neuroimaging tasks to be conducted no matter what you are doing, whether it's walking, standing, or running. This 32-channel FNIRS system is able to record brain activity in the frontal, motor, sensor, and temporal cortices with ease. So when brain activity is recorded by the FNIRS module, it's processed and stored by the DNA computer. Then it's encrypted using the AES-256 encryption algorithm and waits to be sent to whatever third-party service we'd like over Wi-Fi. With just a thought, we can book a car or a flight, send a message, make a payment, subscribe to T-Series, all of it instantly. And we can finally visualize our neural activity. That means we can record our dreams at night and play them back to ourselves in full HD video. We can also visualize our mood and notice how it changes over time, how angry we are, how happy we are, whatever combination of emotions we're feeling in precise detail. And it doesn't end there. The ability to visualize our neural activity means we can visualize our belief systems, value systems, and our own capabilities across a wide range of tasks. This leads to enormous potential for optimizing life. Using our neural patterns, algorithms can match us with our ideal dating partner, diet, fitness plan, and lifestyle plan. The link helps us with the enormous complexity of decision making in our modern world. And let's not forget the potential for creative expression. That song or art piece in your head, you can visualize it immediately. And this ideation feedback loop applies to scientific discovery as well. The ability to visualize a hypothesis in any field has never been easier. But in order for us to be able to visualize all of this and access internet services without needing a screen, the link is also able to modify the brain using what's called temporal interference. Two high-frequency electrical currents are generated using very small electrodes. While these fields are too fast to drive neurons, the currents interfere with one another in such a way that when they intersect, deep in the brain, a small region of low frequency current is generated inside neurons. This low frequency current can be used to drive neurons electrical activity while the high frequency current passes through surrounding tissue with no effect. So if we think, visualize my dream from last night, the link will automatically find the appropriate app from the link's app store, DreamViz in this case, then read our dream, convert that dream data into a neural pattern that would allow us to see that dream in front of us clear as day, just like we would on a normal TV screen, by stimulating our brain to be able to visualize it, triggering the exact combination of colors and textures in the visual cortex to show us something in real life that exists only in the brain. This ability to write to the brain gives us extraordinary capabilities. With the link, we can experience any drug, be it DMT or LSD, without experiencing side effects. It's simply a matter of changing our neural state by downloading the digital version of these drugs. 
We can also download any skill instantly, a PhD in physics, an entire textbook, or even an entire language. And for the gamers, the link lets us experience entirely new worlds in full Five Sense immersion. We can experience the Lord of the Rings trilogy as the main character, or wall hack on Counter-Strike for ourselves. Sharing and communication have improved as well. We can share memories in full detail with others who use the link directly. It allows us to experience love, intimacy, and connection like never before with a partner. Imagine a cosmic love that human words couldn't describe, enhancing every aspect of a relationship, being able to feel what they feel, to be closer to them than ever before. And that feeling of union and connection could be shared not just with one partner, but with groups of people as well. Instant thought-to-thought -thought communication across the globe. There are also concepts that exist that we are currently not capable of understanding or experiencing because we are limited by our biology. Concepts as fundamental as music or the color red. Higher states of consciousness exist in the universe that if we only knew existed, we'd do anything we could to reach there. The link lets us experience them all. There will, of course, be concerns about this device. A major one is manipulation. What if the software you use contains malware or a virus of some kind that could completely wreak havoc on your brain? It's important to note that this technology necessitates a new breed of decentralized peer-to-peer -peer applications that are fully transparent, cryptographically secure, open source, and verified using several third parties. We'll have to completely trust any service we let anywhere near our heads, and Facebook is definitely not one of them. Another issue is a potential intelligence disparity. What happens to those people who don't want to use the link or can't afford it? The more demand there is, the more the link will be manufactured, and thus, the less expensive it gets. Just like smartphones which are rapidly being deployed to millions of people in developing countries. There's one last point I'd like to mention, and that's the role of AI technology in all of this. AI is complementary. It's better than us at some tasks, while we're better at others. For example, when we want to search a question, we create that question in our head using our biological intelligence, then that question is sent to a search engine service that uses AI to parse through billions of web pages to find the most relevant one. Would we even need an artificial general intelligence if we all have this superhuman capability? In fact, is it even possible to build one? Well, we currently have no idea how consciousness works. If consciousness is purely created from our brains, then perhaps we can replicate that consciousness in a machine and create digital beings as counterparts to ourselves. But there's also a chance that there is a universal consciousness that all living things are connected to, that our brain, in fact, acts as a receiver of it, not the source. And if that's the case, the link, a tool of our own creation, extends the capabilities of this irreplaceable phenomenon and moves us closer to this universal consciousness. Regardless, a world of advanced, super-intelligent beings that create, discover, and love each other is an exhilarating thought to imagine. By studying different modes of computing, biotechnology, the role of consciousness, the capabilities of AI, and of course, neuroscience, we definitely have a shot at getting there in our lifetime. What do you think of the link? Let me know in the comments section below, and please subscribe for more programming videos. For now, I've got to stare at a screen, so thanks for watching.